Juan Dixon, born October 9th, 1978. Today's feature is arguably one of the best players in the history of college basketball, and most definitely one of the greatest to play in one of, if not the toughest conference in the nation, the ACC. His college career is what you dream of having from a player's standpoint, along with what a coach would want from his star. He improved every season, was exceptional off the floor representing the program, and won the big prize, a national championship, where he hit some of the biggest shots to lead his team to victory and into the program's history books. His story off the floor is just as captivating as he managed to persevere through losing both parents that struggle with addiction and succumb to the drugs before he was even a senior in high school. His family being ingrained in the city of Maryland as his aunt was actually the mayor of the city and Juan being ingratiated in the streets had no other choice to make but stay home and attend one of the best programs at the time in the country and a personal favorite of mine that I grew up imagining going to, the University of Maryland. He's the only Final Four MVP from the school and one of only four in history to be named Conference Player of the Year. There's a lot I can say about Juan Dixon, especially as a basketball player, because growing up, he was everything to me. I studied his game and credit watching him as a reason I was able to get a Division I scholarship coming from my background. Many people have requested this guy, most recently Joels Wilson, but I struggle with a box to put him in, which is why his feature took so long. Because on one hand, you can't want more than what this guy achieved with his backstory, his size, and level of competition. Way undersized for his position and still dominated, always carried himself exceptionally well, and not only made it to the highest competition league-wise, but to your hometown team in the Washington Wizards to immediately play with everyone's hero back then, Michael Jordan. Is he growth spurt? Is he stunted growth? Even up to writing this, an argument could be made either way. I know this intro was entirely too long, but at least you understand the respect and revere I have for this guy and appreciation for what he's done, if for no one else, for me personally. But I have to be objective, and with that hat on, I did manage to find three reasons why that same success he had in college individually didn't translate to the NBA. Here they are. Salute to Juan, much love. This is all done in respect, and I hope it's received as that. It's your boy JC Stunt Growth. Ash, get it, man. Boy will make his moves. Kicks it out into the corner. Dixon lets it fly and knocks down the long ball. Dixon is a 6'3 shooting guard born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland and attended both Lake Clifton High School and Calvert Hall. He wasn't highly recruited leaving high school, although he was all everything locally for his 97 class. That was until Gary Williams, head coach at Maryland, saw Juan die for a loose ball at an AAU tournament, down 20 and sure to lose. He liked the fire and love for the game in him and offered him a scholarship. At that point, Williams recalls Juan as a shy, skinny kid that wouldn't look him in the eye for more than half a second. After redshirting his first year, Juan stepped into a program that had six total players make it to the NBA, including the legend himself, Steve Francis. After Francis left for the NBA, Dixon exploded into the player he would become, and the story of his college greatness began. Stunt number one, way out. Of position, that is. It's the most obvious knock on Dixon's game in that he's always been as shooting guard as they come. His demeanor, his frame, his natural ability to play without the ball, and his ability to shoot the ball. His game screams shooting guard, and it's what he played for his entire life predominantly before moving on to the NBA, where he had to be tried at the point. The way he was able to get his shot off and the routes he ran along with his quick release would have made him a Hall of Fame NBA shooting guard if he was three inches taller. This would be okay if he, like Steve Francis, who was the same size, could play equally as much point guard. 
but it was clear that Juan was more comfortable and effective playing off the ball. In his sophomore season, he averaged 18 points a game, 5 rebounds, and 3 assists, which was a career high in college for him. Very telling, seeing as in the league, he would have to play the point guard ideally. Distribution wasn't a strong point of his, and I think it's what stunned him as a player in the league. As a freshman, he had Steve Francis, and for the rest of his college career, he had Steve Blake. Dixon really didn't have the chance to polish his point guard skills at that time, and because he was so fitted off the ball is where he was played all four years. Even though he became a legend at the position, it just wasn't ideal in the long run, and when he got to the league, he immediately struggled with that. Playing point guard isn't a position that comes as easy as you think, and an ingredient to success that's necessary for it is experience playing it. I tell guys stuck in that gray area all the time, if you're caught there, it's best to move to the smaller spot and work on those skills and gain experience as it's easier to move to the shooting guard opposed to the opposite way around. We see it all the time. Not having those skills or experience set one up to fail at the next level. Stunt number two, home, not so sweet home. The second stunt, in my opinion, that held Dixon back from becoming what many expected him to was being drafted by the Washington Wizards. Any player in college would love to be drafted to the team they grew up watching and cheering for. But in the business of basketball, that should be the last thing you think about when envisioning succeeding on that level. You look at KD, who never played for his hometown team in either college or the pros, and even in high school he moved away for a year. It's about where you fit best, not what makes you feel the most familiar. Juan couldn't have landed in a worse situation than his hometown Wizards. As a junior in college, he was named All-ACC First Team, averaged 18.2 points a game, 2.6 assists, and shot a career-high 41% from three. The team also made it to their first Final Four, where they lost to Duke. He became a legend as a senior, making it all the way to the national championship game against Indiana, where they became champions, and as Juan threw the ball in the air, he officially became iconic, being the only Terrapin named most outstanding player of the tournament. He was an All-American, Conference Player of the Year, became Maryland men's basketball all-time leading scorer, passing Len Bias, and set himself up to be a clear first-round pick. He did everything you could have in college, except polish his point guard skills, which is why in the upcoming draft, he slid to 17, selected by the Jordan-led Wizards. He had at least four shooting guards in front of him, in Jordan, Hughes, Russell, and Stackhouse. The following season, Gilbert Arenas joined the team, and the Agent Zero era began. Juan, from that point on, got lost in the shuffle, and his stock in the league, along with his confidence, in my opinion, took a hit. In his first three seasons, he never averaged more than nine points a game. He also shot below average from three at 29, 29, and 32, respectively. Stunt number three, okay, what else? Almost everything Dixon got away with in college came back to be an issue for him in the NBA. One of those things was not being effective at other areas of the game outside of scoring. Being undersized in college is fine when you're more talented than the others and also the other teams probably have guys that are undersized at their position as well. Another thing that's obvious when either watching Juan or looking at his numbers was that outside of scoring, what else does he do for the team other than being a possible liability on defense, not being as fast or athletic enough to guard point guards and too small to match up against most NBA shooting guards? He didn't distribute well enough, vocally lead enough, rebounded or even shot well enough throughout his early league days to justify playing him. Because he couldn't find where else he could be effective, he became sort of a journeyman who ended up being traded and also waived through his time in the NBA. Teams just couldn't play him. 
He had his best year in Portland, averaging a career-high 12 points a game, shooting 38% from three. Outside of that, he only averaged at least two assists twice in his seven-year career and at least one steal only once. He played his final season in 08-09 in a return to the Wizards where he averaged five points and two assists in 50 games. He had a short overseas career before entering his coaching journey, beginning at Maryland as a special assistant and now at Coppin State where he's yet to enjoy a winning season in four years. All in all, I gotta put respect on Juan's name because he's still one of the best players overall I've watched in college and a legend in the DC area. No, his NBA career didn't go exactly as planned, but I'm sure he's happy with the journey he's had and the success he's seen as an amateur. Salute to him, like I said, much respect, but for these reasons, his growth was stunning. It's your boy JC, Stunned Growth, and I'm out.